My experience in medical devices started back during my doctoral research at Vanderbilt University. At that time, the focus of my research was on the development of a wearable robotic system to help people with paralysis be able to walk again. The work was successful and started to gain the interest of several commercial entities. Uh, Parker Hannifin was one of them. Parker Hannifin Corporation eventually licensed the technology and invited me to come and serve as the technology lead to commercialize the technology and essentially begin a little med tech startup within that large industrial conglomerate. So for the past 10 years before joining Messiah, I led a team of engineers in electromechanical design, software development, and uh, biomechanical research as we developed and commercialized uh, these wearable robotic systems. Going straight from school into a position of leadership in the medical device industry meant that I was going to learn a lot of things the hard way. I saw an opportunity here at Messiah to create a class which would give students the opportunity not just to encounter the material, encounter the information that they needed to enter this space, but to have a real experience. I wanted to create the class that I wish that I'd had. And so Messiah Medco was born. Our device is called the Semi-Powered Articulating Ankle Joint. So S-P-A squared J, the squared is silent, so it says spatch. We were designing a real-time height adjustable crutch. The idea behind that was to develop a crutch that could be adjusted um, electronically in height up or down. Um, the device that we developed was a hand rehabilitation device for post-stroke patients with clenched fists um, that was able to help aid their rehabilitation process of them being able to open and close their hand um, over time. Our device is called the PES pump, which stands for Precision Electronic Syringe Pump. Essentially, it is not targeting a specific clinical group, but it is trying to address the broad need of syringe pumps in daily use for treating many types of diseases and symptoms. So yeah, our, de our device is made for people with drop foot. Drop foot is when a person's foot just kind of flops down. So when they swing their leg forward, they can sometimes trip over their foot and that can lead to falls, uh, especially in older patients. So in terms of the electrical design, probably like one of the biggest challenges we faced was whenever we were trying to get the stepper motor to turn. At first, we uh, it was like very easy when it was unloaded because uh, we didn't have to provide as much current to produce the torque necessary to run the motor. But then we found whenever we had to actually run it when it was bearing the load, it wouldn't run if we were only providing it with the nine volt battery a level of current. So we had to end up running it off of a power supply so that we could supply the necessary current to get it running. I think that one of our biggest challenges was keeping everything small and compact. Um, we wanted to fit this mechanism inside the crutch and we also wanted to keep it lightweight so that we weren't adding a lot of weight for the user to move as they're trying to walk. When and how to unlock the locking mechanism of our device. First off, like when would it lock? Beginning of when you step near the end of the step before you swing your leg. And also like how how is it gonna be unlocked? What kind of sensor would be used? When we were working on designing how to integrate the electrical components in the device, we had some challenges as far as what components um, would be most uh, critical to implement in the overall system. Yeah, I feel like safety was a big part for our device, being that it is a medical device that people would be using. Our tests that we completed meeting the IEC, IEC 60601 standard. IEC standard 60601. The 60601. Yeah. One of the standards we had to follow closely was the IEC ISO 60601 standard, which shaped um, the way that we chose the plastics that were integrated in the AFO, along with um, some of the electrical components as far as the heat transferability of the solenoid itself. I think what boggled my mind was how realistic it is. SOPs are in the real world, and when you work for a company, you have to abide by them. And so I was able to relate my experience in class with my experience in my internship, and I think that's very valuable and it's it's incredible to see that parallel. I would add that standard operating procedures are really helpful 
um, in providing a foundation for a team. Although they can be kind of difficult and a hassle to put up with in the beginning, when you have something later down the line and you needed to reference something from really long time ago, it's really good to have followed the standard operating procedures because you can just look right back and you know where you're going to find things. One of the helpful aspects about the FDA design controls was it required a design history file, which was a compiling of all of our documents as the team worked through the design process. Um, this was a helpful resource as we were able to piggyback off of each other's work, but I would also find it helpful in the future for other teams to reference and to grow from our mistakes. One of our kind of safety features was that we wanted to keep the the button to a single button, a single press button. It's simple input for the user. It prevents things like if you have a toggle switch, accidentally bumping it, causing unexpected lengthening or shortening, which could cause imbalance or, or possible fall risks. Um, so one of the main hazards that we faced um, on our hazard analysis per um, FDA design controls was a focus on bubble detection. Uh, if an air bubble would happen to go through the system, especially if they were injecting this into their bloodstream, um, that could result in an air embolism. And so instead of prevent these air bubbles, we were focused on detecting them and stopping the system before they could enter the bloodstream. So the first time around, our prototype didn't work out as we planned. All right, so what? <laughs> you want to say anymore? <laughs> yeah. I love the prototyping process. It was definitely iterative. That's what that's what the prototyping process typically is. I had an opportunity to take what I envisioned, then actually begin to machine it. And I think what was valuable was to be able to have um, Dr. Ferris's guidance and Mr. Meyer's guidance um, as I went through this process. I definitely feel like it built my confidence as a potential career that I could do in the future. I feel like our experience at uh, Medco was very inclusive from the start of the ideas and concepts to the need to finally getting to a final de device and testing it. Um, most people in the industry will specialize in one specific area, but we have the great experience of having all steps of the entire process. So I think that really helps us with moving forward into the industry and determining where we're going to be at. I think that Messiah Medco is designed really well with Dr. Ferris as the head of it. He has a lot of experience in medical device company. A lot of the SOPs reflect things that he's experienced directly. Like if you really want to get prepared um, for life after college going into industry, like this is the class to take.